What's up guys? I know it's been a hot minute, but I am back with an Apple Motion tutorial. We're going to be making a logo reveal animation step by step in Apple Motion. Mine is going to have a Barbie theme because I'm very much still in a Barbie mood, but you could do this effect with like any logo. The only thing to know is that you need the logo and then some other corresponding shape that makes sense for your design. So I'm going to be using this Barbie logo and that kind of starburst shape from the Mattel logo. Of course, if you subscribe to my Patreon, you get all of my working files, including all of these graphical elements, so you can work right alongside me. All right, guys, let's just dive right into it. So here's a look at my project settings. I'm just working on a regular motion composition project. My preset is 4K 24 frames per second, and my duration is six seconds. And by the way, before we get into this project, if you really want to get a great handle on Apple Motion, I do have a course that's on sale literally for a couple more days at jenjager.com called Motion Launchpad. So check that out. All right, let's get into this. So the first thing we're going to do is head on over to our library, navigate down to generators and select a color solid. I'm going to drop this right here in my project pane. And in the inspector window, I'm going to switch the color of this to just pure white. Next, I'm going to bring in that starburst shape and drop it in the same group as my color solid in the project pane. Now let's select that color solid again, head on over to object at the top of our UI and select add image mask. And in the mask source well, I'm going to drag that Mattel logo and then I'm going to invert that mask. So our color solid has a cutout, the shape of that starburst. Now in our project pane, let's select that logo. It's been disabled because we've used it to create an image mask, but we can still modify it. So select it on that logo, head on over to properties in your inspector window, and let's dial down the scale to 60%. At this point, I wanna make my project 3D. So let's go ahead and add a camera at the top of our UI and select switch to 3D in the pop-up window. All right, let's go back to our color solid, select it here in our project pane and at the top right of the UI hit the replicate button. Let's make some adjustments to this new replicator we've created. First, I want to go down to the 3D line and check that box. Now let's head on up to shape and select box. Under columns, I want to change this from five to one and I want to do the same on row. On ranks, I want to change this to 10 instead of five. And now under size, let's drop down here and change our depth to 3600. Now under the origin line, I wanna change this from center to back. Now I'm gonna switch from my active camera here in my canvas to our left view. This is a 3D view of my project. So here's my camera, and then here are all of the layers we created. There's 10 of them. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see them all. Still selected on that replicator under the properties tab, I'm going to drop down on position so I can see the Z parameter, and I'm just going to push this forward. Let's say I'm at about 2300. And now you can see that all of my cutouts are between our zero baseline and our camera. All right, let's go back to our active camera view. At this point, I wanna bring in my other graphical elements. So I'm going to bring in this Barbie logo. I'm just gonna drop it toward the top of my project pane. And I'm also going to bring in this Barbie movie poster that I'm just going to use for color reference. Now let's head back to the replicator in our project pane. Let's first draw our attention to the color mode. Let's go from original to over pattern. Now we can see all of the different layers of our replicator under this color gradient. I'm just going to drop down to expand it and I'm going to change these color tags. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab this very hot pink from the actual Barbie logo here. So I'm going to select this color tag. I'm going to grab my eyedropper and I'm going to click that pink. Now I'm going to create a new color tag in my gradient just by clicking along the gradient. And on this one, I'm going to color pick the light pink of this Barbie convertible. And then I'm going to create one more color tag here. And I'm going to color pick the blue sky from the movie poster. Now I'm going to disable that movie poster. We don't need it any longer. We were just using it for color reference. And now I'm going to take a really close look at my gradient here. So the location of my first hot pink color tag is of course at zero. You can see that down here in this line. I want this next one to be at 10%. So I'm pretty close to, I'm at 9.22. 
but I'm just gonna aim for perfection and make it 10%. And this blue one, I want to be at 20%. So I'm just gonna click it to see where it's landing. And I'm going to change that to 20%. Now I wanna repeat these color tags throughout the rest of my gradient. The first thing I'm going to do is grab this default color tag that automatically appeared when we changed from color to over pattern. I'm just gonna grab it and hold down my mouse key and drag it away to get rid of it. Now I'm going to select that first hot pink color tag, hold down the option key in my keyboard, and I'm gonna duplicate it here. And then I'm going to release the option key and my mouse button. I'm gonna grab the light pink one, hold down the option key and drag. And again, I'm going to do the same with the blue and so on and so forth until I have 10 different color tags all evenly spaced. While I'm perfecting my gradient here, guys, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, do that YouTube thing, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, now that we've got our gradient perfected, let's head on down to the scale values under the cell controls. I'm gonna reduce the scale from 100 to 14%. And then I'm going to crank up the scale end to 400%. So now you can see that there's variation in the size of our replicators. And another thing I wanna do is head back to the color solid, the first thing we created in this project. It's disabled because we've used it to create a replicator, but we can still modify it. I'm going to select it in my project pane, head on over to properties, and let's add a little bit of a drop shadow to this guy. That is going to give all of my different layers in my replicator some definition, and I can play with that drop shadow to really make it look three-dimensional. If you saw the Barbie movie, you know that they used old practical effects to create some of the scenes. I'll drop in a quick clip of the behind the scenes here where they did this. And so I'm really just trying to replicate that fun 2D look from that Barbie movie. All right, so we've got all of our little replicators here. The next thing I wanna do is drop in another color solid. So I'm gonna head on over to library, grab that color solid again, and I'm going to drop it at the top of my project pane. Now you see what happened here. It filled in that open circle in the center of our replicators. That is because this color solid, let me switch you back to the left perspective. That color solid is landing right at our zero baseline. So it's behind our replicator. Let me go back to the active camera and then let's head on over to that color solid and I'm going to make this guy here white. And then I'm going to grab our Barbie logo and I'm gonna drag it in my project pane above that color solid. So it's layered on top of that white background. All right, now let's focus in on our camera that we added here in the project pane and made this project 3D. I'm gonna drag my playhead in my timeline I don't know, about let's say 14 frames in and let's keyframe the scale on this camera. So it looks like we're zooming right through all of these different replicator layers. So with my playhead queued up at the 14 frame mark, I'm gonna head on over to properties and I'm going to add a keyframe here on scale and I'm going to increase that scale value and that actually zooms me out. You can see it zooms me out of the frame. It kind of does the opposite of what you would think it would do. So I'm gonna put it at about 130 here. And then in my timeline, I'm going to hold down the shift key and arrow over once for 10 frames, twice for 20 frames, three times for 30 frames. And then I'm going to reduce this scale value, thereby creating a new keyframe, until I'm all the way through all of my replicators. So I'm not seeing, see the jagged edge here? I don't wanna see that. I'm gonna go as far down as I need to go. I'm at nine here. Um, and then I'm going to select that Barbie logo and I'm going to scale it way down so it fits in the frame. The other thing I want the camera to do is to spin around. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead maybe about a little less than halfway through this movement and make sure you're selected on the camera in your project pane. Head on over to properties. Let's drop down in rotation and add a keyframe on the Z value. And now under the scale value, I'm going to use this little arrow over to jump to the last keyframe on my scale change. And I'm going to change the Z rotation to a value of 360. So what this is going to do is our camera is gonna rotate around, but you can see as I do this, there are some gaps 
Let's see if I can spot one, like right here. Okay, so my color solid because it's not square, right? It's got a 16 by nine aspect ratio. It's leaving some holes here on my rotation. So let's go back to our original color solid. It's still disabled, that's okay. And then we're gonna head on over to generator in the inspector tab. And under height, I'm just gonna push this up so everything's filled in. Now let's draw our attention to that Barbie logo. So I'm gonna select it in my project pane and I'm going to queue up my playhead to the first keyframe we made on our camera rotation. That's the center one here. If you're not seeing these red keyframes represented in your timeline, just make sure you have this little button here open guys. That'll show you those keyframes and it'll kind of help you navigate your timeline a little bit more. So I want this Barbie logo to start to come in right when we start to spin. So having my playhead queued up here, I'm at the one second two frame mark. I'm gonna select my Barbie logo in my timeline and I'm going to hit the I key on my keyboard so that the start of that Barbie logo aligns with that Z keyframe. So watch what happens here. It just sort of pops right in here just as we start spinning. But I don't want it to just pop in, I actually want it to fade in. So I'm going to select that Barbie logo, head on over to behaviors, basic motion, and add a fade in and fade out behavior. In the inspector window, I'm gonna change the fade in time to five and the fade out time to zero. I don't want it to fade out. And that's what we've got so far. But I also wanna add a blur effect to that Barbie logo as that camera is spinning on the Z axis. So again, select it on that Barbie logo. Let's head on up to filters. We're gonna go down to blur and we're going to select the radial blur. And I'm actually gonna keyframe the angle of this radial blur. So I'm going to have my playhead queued up to the very beginning of that Barbie logo, select it on the radial blur. In our inspector window, I'm going to add a keyframe on angle and I'm going to increase this angle to let's say 130. And now I wanna trim this radial blur and reduce the angle at the same time. So working in my timeline, I'm going to hit the shift key and arrow over twice to move 20 frames. And then I'm going to trim this radial blur by holding down the O key. And then I'm going to add another keyframe here in my inspector by reducing the angle from 130 to just zero. Let's do a little bit more with this. I'm going to add an overshoot behavior to this logo. So I'm going to select it in my project pane, head on over to properties, and I want to overshoot the Z rotation. So I'm going to drop down here and select add parameter behavior and then overshoot. Or you could go up here to behaviors, parameter, and then select overshoot here as well if you wanted to, okay. So now the overshoot behavior is in my timeline here, the entire duration of my Barbie logo, which is not what I want. So I'm just going to like play with the timing of this a little bit. And the shorter the duration on this, the bouncier this move is gonna feel. So I just want this to be like, I don't know, one second and five frames, let's do that. And then on the start value, let's make it a value of 30. We're gonna leave the end value at zero and the ramp duration, I'm going to make one. And at this point, I'm going to open my keyframe editor so we can see what that shape looks like. I think the ramp duration's a little too low. I'm gonna bump it up here. There we go. So I ended up at 5.11. And while we have our keyframe editor open, I actually wanna modify the interpolation of the camera keyframe. So I'm gonna select it here in my timeline with that keyframe editor open. And let's drop down here and just show the scale keyframes. I'm gonna select both of these by lasso dragging them, interpolation. I'm going to switch it to Bezier. Someone corrected me about how to pronounce Bezier a long time ago and I've never forgotten. And I'm just going to grab these tangents here and give this movement more of an S curve. I think that feels really good. And the last thing I wanna do is think about how this logo reveal is gonna start because I don't really wanna see this right off the top. So what I am going to do is add a color solid on top of this. So again, head on over to the library, grab a color solid, and I'm going to drop it at the top of my project pane. And again, this color solid is deep down in the center of our starburst shape. 
We're gonna remedy that in a second, but first I just wanna head on over to Generator and change the color of this to that hot pink. And then I wanna bring it forward in Z space. But to do that, I wanna get a good side view of my entire project. So again, instead of active camera, I'm going to be on the left. And then I'm going to give myself a split screen here so I can see what I'm doing at the same time. So selected on that new hot pink color solid we just dropped in there. I'm gonna head on over to properties and I'm going to push forward on the Z position. There we go, until it's in front of everything. And I want this color solid to sort of fade out just as my camera starts to move. So we can see at the top of our timeline, this is where our camera is, this is where the, the movement starts to happen. I'm gonna go past that by one frame. I'm gonna select that hot pink color solid and I'm going to hit the O key to bring it out. And then let's add a fade in, fade out behavior. I'm gonna make the fade in value zero and let's make the fade out, I don't know, six. I think I'm gonna increase the duration of that color solid. There we go. So there you go, guys. That is our Barbie-inspired logo reveal. Did you guys like this video? Have you missed me? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to know more about Apple Motion, check out Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. Picked out some other videos I know you're going to love, and I'll see you again.